This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll be showing you how to install a smiley face zipper or a curb zipper in a vinyl window application. This window will also include a permanent screen. And as you can see here, we're going to include a strap to roll up your window so that you can let the air into your enclosure. This video will show in detail the steps required to put a curved zipper in vinyl window material, including basting and sewing, and also how to install a permanent screen, which is installed at the same time that the curved zipper is. This video is a small excerpt taken from the Enclosure DVD. The Enclosure DVD will soon be available from Sailrite at the end of 2012. A detailed material list will be found at the end of this video. With the window panel installed on your boat, go to your boat and take some measurements to uh, indicate where you want the zipper opening to be installed. It's a good idea to use a yardstick and be sure that the zipper opening is horizontal with the rest of the boat from afar. The location of your zipper opening is totally dependent upon what you think looks best and what will work for your application. We've positioned a ruler at the bottom indicating where we want the uh, zipper to come across at the bottom and also on the side and we're measuring from the corner four inches out. Taking measurements like this will ensure that we have a curve that's easy to sew and consistent. Now measure up from that corner eight inches and place a mark and then draw a line up and then measure out eight inches along the horizontal area and place a mark and draw a line out. The line that we drew out should be about 12 inches in length. It'll be extended later on. We want our zipper opening to be centered between this panel. That's for our particular application. Yours may be different. So we're measuring the sides to ensure that the opening is centered. Then we're placing those two rulers at the corner again at that same location on the opposite side. To create the curve at this side, we'll measure from the corner four inches up and eight inches on each side and we'll mark the glass. We're using a sharpie marker here to mark the vinyl window material. These marks will be hidden in a later step. We've determined that we want our zipper to extend approximately four inches from the upper zipper so we're marking it four inches and we'll extend that line to that four inch mark. We'll measure that side and then we'll place that same length line on the opposite side of the window. So the top edge of our window opening will be horizontal with the bottom opening. When creating the curve for your zipper, it's a good idea not to make a really sharp curve. It's more difficult to get the zipper to lay flat. So we recommend doing a similar curve as you've seen in this video. We'll be using a bias binding 3 quarter inch and we're also going to apply the 129 basting tape from Sailrite to the back side of this bias binding. We'll be applying the three-quarter inch bias binding to the outer portion of the line we just drew onto the vinyl window material. When you get to the curve, it should nicely go around that curve. So we're just uh, lining it up to that line. We put it four inches from the corner and then matching the straight lines on both the horizontal and vertical line. Here we are coming to the curve on the opposite corner. As you can see, the double-sided tape or basting tape is extremely helpful in holding the bias binding in its appropriate position on the vinyl window material. That'll make it possible to take this application to the sewing machine and sew it without this material moving on top of the vinyl. If you make mistakes, you can peel it up and reapply it. Here at the top edge, where we measured down approximately 4 inches from the zipper, we'll just cut it with scissors. No need to use a hot knife here, that'll be covered later on. We'll be sewing this window with the Ultrafeed Sailrite LS1 sewing machine. This is a straight stitch only sewing machine, great for canvas and upholstery. And you'll notice that we're sewing the outer edge of the binding. We're also using the Helios thread, which is a lifetime guaranteed thread. Helios thread and Tanara thread are more expensive, but they never rot. You could use a polyester V92 thread as well. It's UV resistant, but in time, several years, it will eventually rot. You'll notice that Deb is scrolling the material to enable it to fit underneath the arm of the sewing machine nicely. Even though this is not a long arm sewing machine, we can still feed it through the sewing machine quite nicely by scrolling the material as Deb is doing here. Take your time when sewing the curves. 
The more careful you are in sewing, the more beautiful your job will come out. When designing your window, remember that the further in your window is from the edge of the glass, the more scrolling you'll have to do on the sewing machine. When you're done sewing this uh, binding on the outer edge, do not sew the inner edge. That will be done in a later step. If you had noticed, we did not reverse when we began this stitch, and we will not reverse to lock the stitch in place here at the end, because later on we'll have a 2-inch facing covering this location. It's now time to baste and sew the zipper in place. Typically, smiley face windows or curved zippers are usually made from a YKK coil zipper, not a Vislon zipper. A coil zipper will bend around a corner nicely. Deb is placing this zipper on top of the uh, curved opening to determine uh, how long she should cut it. She's going to cut a little bit extra long, but uh, only an inch or so, so that we don't waste any zipper here. Now we'll apply the uh, basting tape to the back side. We're using a quarter inch basting tape here. By using a quarter inch basting tape, we stay away from the zipper teeth, and we'll apply it to both sides of the zipper flange. Here's a close-up view of what the coil zipper looks like on the top side. You'll notice there are plastic teeth that are sewn in with a polyester thread. That's why it curves so nicely. We've flipped this window panel over and are now basting the zipper on the inside of the window, directly on top of the binding that we basted and sewed on. Notice that as we work the zipper on top of the curve, there are a few wrinkles. You can work those wrinkles out by spending a little bit of time and also spreading the wrinkles so that there are small wrinkles distributed evenly along the whole curve instead of just a few large wrinkles at specific spots. Take your time. The more time you spend at installing the zipper on the curve, the better the results. The straightaways are quite easy, which we'll show next. Notice that the inside edge does have some wrinkles. This is quite normal, as the inside edge needs to shrink and the outside edge needs to stretch. Even after applying the inside edge, when you take it over to the sewing machine, it is likely that the inside edge may come unglued because it's uh, under quite a bit of stress. That's okay as well, so when you get it to the sewing machine, you can stop short of sewing a certain section and smooth out the wrinkles again, just as we are here. We'll show you more of that when we take it to the sewing machine to sew it. Now finally, we're coming along to that straightaway. This is quite easy to baste in place because there's no shrinkage and stretching going on. Keep basting the zipper in place, being sure the inside edge of the zipper is even with the inside edge of the binding on the opposite side of the glass. Here you can see Deb working out a few of the wrinkles because some of them are a little bit too big, so she's spreading them out so they're a little bit smaller, distributed more evenly. We've skipped ahead here to uh, the final portion of the zipper and as you can see there's a few inches hanging off the edge of the binding on the back side so we'll trim it so it's flush with that binding with scissors. We'll now take it to the Sayerite Alterfeed LS1 sewing machine and we'll sew a straight stitch, the longest stitch possible, 6 millimeters for this machine, right along the inside edge of that zipper flange. It is a good idea to keep the stitch as close to that edge of the zipper as possible. That way it catches the binding on the back side a little bit close to the edge. So don't go in too far because then the uh, edge of the binding will just be hanging loose. Here when we get to the corner you can see the sum of the zipper has come up. The double sided tape doesn't hold well there because of the fact that the zipper is having to be shrunk so much. So stop sewing and then work uh, on taking out those wrinkles by reapplying the zipper to the uh, 
basting tape underneath and be sure to spread those wrinkles out so that they're evenly distributed across the whole length of the curve. That way the wrinkles are smaller. As discussed previously, sew this application slowly. The more careful and slow you go, the more beautiful the results. Not only does Deb have to scroll the material to get it underneath the arm of the sewing machine, but she also has to keep the material out of the way of the camera's tripod. <laughs> so she's got a double task here. But as you can see here, she's working out the wrinkles, making it look the best way possible. And if you take your time like this, you'll get a much better and cleaner looking uh, curve. All right, we're back to the straightaway. We're gonna skip ahead here. The process is exactly the same with the opposite curve. We'll now be applying the screen to the window. We did not show it, but we've already applied basting tape to the outer perimeter around the uh, binding that we just installed. And now we're basting Pfeiffertex material. There are two types of Pfeiffertex that Sayerite -right sells. This is the regular Pfeiffertex. There's another Pfeiffertex called Pfeiffertex Plus which has a tighter weave. We don't recommend that because there's not much airflow that can come through. This Pfeiffertex will still block the mosquitoes. It may not block noceums, but it'll definitely block mosquitoes from coming through. An alternative mesh product that Sayerite -right sells is a fiberglass mesh. It will block mosquitoes and noceums, and you can use that for this application if you choose as well. The fiberglass mesh is a vinyl coated product just like Pfeiffertex. Once the mesh product is basted in place, we'll trim around the outside perimeter just short of being inside the edge of the zipper flange on the bottom side of the glass. Deb has placed some white fabric underneath here so she can see that flange a little bit more easily. That sheet is just laying on the bottom side of our window application. With a ruler lined up to the two ends of the binding, she'll trim the top side of the Pfeiffertex mesh material. This doesn't need to be perfectly straight because we will be putting a two inch facing on the top of it in a later step. Now we'll take a three quarter inch bias binding and apply double sided tape to the back side of it. This will run along the top side of the screen material so be sure it's long enough for that. And then we'll apply it directly on top of the screen material matching it up to the flange of the zipper that's on the bottom side of this window. This will cover the edge of the screen material and give it a nice finished look. We'll be sewing the inside perimeter, then the outside perimeter. Be sure that when you purchase the binding that it is a bias cut binding. Bias binding will go around curves a lot nicer than a straight cut binding. When you are putting down your binding, be sure that the zipper on the bottom side is pushed out and laying flat against the glass because you're using that as a reference point for the edge of the binding. So you may want to check that while you're applying the binding. And here we are coming to the end. The binding has been cut perfectly so that it matches up exactly. We'll now be sewing the binding and then the zipper. Because we can't see the binding well from the inside surface of the glass, we're gonna take a Sharpie marker and mark across the uh, edge of that binding we just installed on top of the mesh. We're using a white uh, fabric on the bottom side to help us see through this material. By doing this now, it'll make it easier for us to take it to the sewing machine and use those marks as a reference to where to sew. Then we can match up these notches that Deb's making in the material with a straight line. We'll use those as a reference for sewing. Now we'll lift up the zipper, the portion that is on the outside of the curve, and we'll use that line that we just marked on the glass as a reference to keep our stitch nice and straight and follow the curve beautifully. As discussed earlier, we do not reverse the beginning and the end of our stitch to lock it in place because there'll be a two inch facing installed along the top edge. And as you can see, we're sewing right along that black mark that uh, we used as a reference. That'll put our stitch right on the uh, edge of the binding on the bottom side. 
and we're actually inside our quarter inch seam stick so it's not involving the foot or the feed dog. What Deb's saying there is that the seam stick that we applied earlier is not interfering with the presser foot or the sewing machine's feeding. Even if the presser foot were larger, it probably wouldn't be a problem having that basting tape all the way to the right. However, if it is a problem, you need to put in a roping zipper foot left. As you sew, if the material runs into the base of the sewing machine, be sure to scroll it up nicely and, as discussed earlier, go as slow as possible for the best results. All right, the inner stitch is done, and here's what it looks like on the side we just sewed, right next to that previous stitch. And if you flip it over, here's what it looks like on the binding. We'll flip the glass over to the other side and rebaste the zipper flange to the outer edge of our zipper opening. If you need to use more basting tape because it doesn't stick well, you can do that, but it's probably not necessary. If you do use more basting tape, be sure to use the quarter inch width, not the 3 8 inch width, as the 3 8 will may interfere with the zipper teeth. Once it's basted down, we'll take it over to the sewing machine and we'll sew as close to that outer edge so that it uh, catches the binding on the opposite side and also holds the zipper down well, just as we did previously. The outer edge does not typically have any wrinkles in it, so you don't need to worry about smoothing out wrinkles. The outer edge has to stretch while the inner edge that we sewed previously has to shrink. So Deb's just being sure that the zipper is as flat as possible up against the final window material. Take your time so that you get a nice result. In order to slit the vinyl window material, we're going to separate the zipper. Just pull the zipper halves apart and then use your finger to run it down the length of the zipper chain. That will separate the two halves. We'll be using an awl to punch through the vinyl window material. You can use a sharp object if you don't have an awl. That way we can insert a pair of shears through the vinyl window material and we can slit uh, running right in the middle of the two pieces of binding on the opposite side of the window. We do not want to cut the mesh screen. Do not cut the mesh screen, only the vinyl window material, and be sure not to damage the binding or the stitching that holds the binding in place. The zipper halves have already been separated when we uh, made the slit in the vinyl window material. If they're not separated, you need to do that before you can install the slide. We're going to use a single pull slider, obviously, because we can't gain access to the back side. And we just started onto the ends of the zipper, as shown here in the video, with the fat end facing down, and then just slide them into place. We're going to be installing two single pull sliders onto each one of our windows so that it can be unzipped. Uh, from either side and then they can be unrolled nicely. So here we are showing it unzipping so that we can roll the vinyl window material up in a later step. Your smiley face window opening or curved window opening is almost complete. Now we need to install a two inch facing along the top to give it a complete and finished look. Deb's marking the two inch umbrella facing with a soapstone pencil and then she's going to cut it with a serite edge hot knife that will seal the ends so they do not unravel and then she's going to cut it to the appropriate size. You'll need a strip for both the uh, top side and the bottom side of your window enclosure. We're using the double sided tape. This is part number 129. This is the 3 8 inch width here and basting it on both edges of the 2 inch umbrella facing. We also sell a stamoid facing which is made from vinyl. Now we'll baste it in place along the top edge of this uh, window opening being sure to uh, cover the Fifertex mesh material that we used and also the binding nicely. So that uh, binding and the Fifertex is somewhere in the middle of the two inch facing. Mm -hmm. 
We'll do that same procedure to the opposite side to give it a finished look as well. Now it's time to install the roll up strap since we'll be able to roll up the vinyl window material to expose the screen and allow air to enter through our zipper opening. We need to find the middle of that facing we just installed so we measured that to find the middle. Unzip the slider so you can roll up the window panel and now we'll insert a webbing strap in between the window and the screen material at that center mark. We're going to install a little piece of this uh, seam stick. This is 129, the 3 8 inch wide. And then we're going to baste that webbing tab uh, between the window and the vinyl mesh. So I take that and I'll lift up the window so it doesn't stick to the window. No need to push the webbing past the halfway point. Typically, you can just push it halfway up or a quarter inch into the uh, facing edge. We're just going to be stitching along there and we'll reverse later to lock it in place. It's not under a lot of stress. Now we're going to take it to the Sayrite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine and we'll sew right over that zipper, reversing to lock the stitch in place here because this is our final stitch. And we'll continue sewing down the length of this two inch facing securing it in place. When we get to that webbing strap that we just inserted, we'll sew over it and reverse a little bit to lock the stitches in place over the webbing strap and secure it a little bit more. So here we do some reversing and then we continue to sew across the entire length to the opposite edge and we sew over the zipper teeth. Do this slowly and here the walking foot doesn't want to walk over it but we just helped it through and reverse and now that is done. Now we just need to do that same procedure to the top edge. Only You only need to reverse at the beginning and the end of your stitch to lock the stitch in place. Next we'll install a snap. This is a snap stud and this is going to be obviously a cloth to cloth application. We're just marking the position of the uh, stud in the two inch facing right above that webbing. We're going to insert the premium cutting block and we're going to use a 1 8 inch hole cutter to uh, create a hole into the 2 inch facing. Then we'll uh, use our deluxe snap fastener tool. We'll put the uh, eyelet onto the base as shown here. Feed the eyelet through the hole that we just created in the 2 inch facing and also the vinyl obviously that's in the center of the 2 inch facing. Place the stud on top and use the, the top portion of the tool and give it a few blows of the mallet to roll the uh, barrel in place and that uh, snap stud is installed. Now to do the other end we're going to use the press and snap tool but before we do that we need to measure the appropriate length of webbing that we desire and this is obviously up to you preference how tight do you want your window rolled we're going to roll it fairly tight here so that the window is rolled up as high as possible and that determines the length of webbing that we uh, need uh, to cut and we're also going to be sure that the end is folded over nicely so we have two layers of webbing. So she's going to mark it with a soapstone pencil. We're going to cut it with a hot knife to prevent the unraveling of the webbing. So we're going to put a ruler there so that we can cut on top of the metal ruler without damaging any of the fabric. And we're going to use that Sayrite Edge hot knife again to cut the webbing. Then we're going to roll the end of the webbing over and we're going to install a button and a socket using the press and snap tool from Sayrite. If you do not have the press and snap tool, you can use that deluxe snap fastener installation tool that we used earlier. Just roll the uh, anvil over to the uh, button side and you can install a button and a socket. Depress the lever of the press and snap tool and that snap is installed beautifully. Snap it and your window is rolled up nicely. Your smiley face or curved window opening is now complete. As promised, here's the materials list. You may want to pause the video to study these two lists. The average material cost for a single smiley face window is around $39 for the materials. Be sure to check out Sayerite's other videos at the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel today.
This has been a small excerpt from the Enclosure DVD that's coming soon to Sayerite in 2012. I'm Eric Grant with Sayerite. Thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.